This is the BBC Home Service. Big Brother is watching you. Oh. <laughs> this game <laughs> the BBC would like to caution parents this program is unsuitable for the very young the very old the middle-aged those just going off <laughs> those on the turn young dogs and Alderman John Snag <laughs> this is the story of the year 1985 <laughs> <laughs> My name is 846 Winston Seagoon. I am a worker in the great news collecting center of the Big Brother Corporation, or as you knew it, the BBC. In every room is a TV screen that gives out a stream of orders. Attention, people of England State. Thanks to de-rationing and the free market, the price of tea has now gone down to 85 guineas a quarter. <laughs> and here's good news for state housewives. The following goods are now in the shops. Plastic and sawdust elephant nightshirts, <laughs> second-hand concrete parachutes, <laughs> Artificial explodable woolen bloomers, <laughs> men's self igniting tailless shirts with anti thunder sheet attached. <laughs> there are unlimited supplies in the shops. Oh, it's good to be alive! <laughs> now, here is an answer 283 Good old Greenslade. <laughs> Special interest to BBC workers. By mixing water with earth, our scientists have invented mud. <laughs> it's now on sale in the BBC canteen under the name of macaroni au gratin or coffee. <laughs> Big fat slob, get off the screen. Worker Seagoon, did I hear you complaining? Oh, <laughs> vision master Ronnie Wallman. <laughs> You are not complaining about our BBC TV, are you? Oh, no, no. What is the finest TV programme in the world? Kaleidoscope. You are forgiven. <laughs> As a penance, you will put a copy of the Radio Times in your window. And don't forget to watch tonight's programme. Oh, yes. Ask Son of Pickles. Yes. <laughs> Tonight, he hopes to have a one-legged dying Eskimo play the piano for him. <laughs> now, everybody face the TV screen. It's time for the hate half hour. <laughs> Attention all. Coming on the screen now is the man you must all hate, the sworn enemy of the Big Brother Corporation, and this is him. Listen, listen, don't believe him. Listen, BBC workers, rise and overthrow your masters before it's too late. I will lead you against them. Strike now, revolt. So this was Morris Winnickstein, leader of the ITA. <laughs> Join the independent television army now. Hate, 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 nine, ten, out. Enough. Now here is a special announcement from Big Brother. BBC workers, the canteen is now open. Lunch is ready. Doctors are standing by. <laughs> As I sat at my table eating my boiled water, I began to hate Big Brother Corporation. Hello there, Winston. Here, yeah. guess what I found in my dinner? What? A piece of food. <laughs> oh, it's good to be alive in 1985. Poor producer fool. Still, 60 years with the Huggets would turn anyone. I love you, darling. I love you too. Not you, two and three echoes. You, 846 Winston. <laughs> You're a woman, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> Thank heaven. You've got to be so careful these days, you know. <laughs> we 
Winston, darling. I've loved you from afar. My favorite distance. <laughs> but who are you? I'm 612 Miss Fnut. I operate the pornograph machine in the Forbidden Records department. <laughs> and I love you. No, love is not for us. Yes. No, love is only for the higher income group. John Snag, Audrey Cameron and Paul Fenulli. <laughs> Darling, let's take a chance. Let's meet somewhere under the moon alone. We can clasp each other to each other. And then... Oh... Oh! It's good to be alive. Shut up, Eccles. Shut up, Eccles. Now, darling, where can we meet? Somewhere where no one is listening. I know the very place. Home service, 8.30 Tuesday night. You mean the forbidden goon sector? Yes. Wait. A belt you're wearing. That is the anti-sex league belt. <clears throat> well, I don't think I'll come. <laughs> oh, but you too are wearing the anti-sex league belt. I was forced to. Why? My trousers kept falling down. <laughs> Till Tuesday. There she goes, little fairy. That night in my room, I sat out of range of the TV screen. I loved Fnut and I hate Big Brother. I wrote it in my diary. I hate BB. I hate BB. I hate BB. I hate BB. Hello? Hello. Don't tell anybody, but I hate BB too. Who are you? Ben Lyon. <laughs> so there was an underground movement. I must try and find it and do my best to save England from tyranny. I strode into the street. I entered the forbidden goon sector of London. Once there, I went into the notorious goon public house, the Grosvenor. for the cabaret. I have pleasure in presenting those glamorous grandmothers, the three Beverly sisters. Correction, the Beverly twins. Miss Beverly will sing Everybody Down. To think this used to be Palm Court. I looked around the bar. They were dressed in cloth caps, corduroy trousers, rough lumberjack shirts, bald heads and beards. And some of the men were dressed the same. Me. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't see you. Say not, you did not hurt me. In the blue bottle, the toast of the goon sector. No sausages. <laughs> Thank you, fellow goons, for the sausage and the plus. What's that plain wrapper book you're reading? <laughs> that is a naughty little book, yes. Listen to this. In the darkness, <laughs> she felt his hot breath on her bed rail. <laughs> <laughs> then a warm hand fell on her marble washstand. Stop! Stop that! Give me that book at once. Why? I want to read it. <laughs> What's it called? Mrs. Dale's Real Diary. <laughs> Mrs. Dale's... Heavens, would the BBC stop at nothing? So this is how they kept the masses from thinking. <laughs> Look at this page. <laughs> it's a 3D picture of Mrs. Dale in a nutshell. <laughs> Being chased by Richard Dimbleby. <laughs> <laughs> Pauses to wipe drool off chin. <laughs> I had to go outside. I couldn't bear to watch these poor goons wallow in misery. It was then I wandered into an antique shop. I've got a lovely bunch of coconuts. There. Good evening. Do you mind if I take a gander around the shop? Uh, no, as long as it's house strain. <laughs> there they are, uh, standing in a row. I say. What's this old object? Uh, it, it's beautiful, isn't it? Yes. it? It's called a cricket bat. Oh, yes. Didn't they have test matches way back? Yes, that's quite right. Uh, matter of fact, this bat was used in the very last test by an Australian opening bat. You can see it's quite unmarked. <laughs> old man, tell me. What is it like back in 1955? Well, well, we had sports and games, coloured movies... 
Mr. Monkhouse, Gilbert Harding. <gasps> it was terrible. Hey, Winston, look who's here. Hello, dearest. Darling, I love you. Oh, I love you too. Shut up. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. Oh. We were looking in the window for antiques and we saw you. <clears throat> we mustn't be seen together. Quick, into this room. Darling, alone at last. Dearest nut. Let me kiss you and... Oh, here, don't start yet. I'll go and get a chair. Eccles, you go outside and keep watch. I can watch better than you. Eccles! <laughs> There's the door. Oh, no, dearest. Alone at last. Yep, alone at last. <laughs> Eccles! Get out alone! Oh. Tell him me to get out like that. Oh. Be a biker. I, I don't care. Slam in the door like that on me. They can stand there all night for all I care. I don't, I don't care. I don't care at all. I don't care. I, I don't mind. I, I'll wait. I'll wait here till they finish. I, 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 Will I, I, you I, stop I, muttering and get out? Okay. <laughs> oh. Hey. Hello, Bottle. Ekiel. You are looking to the kill. Yes, I was. <laughs> <laughs> You know, that's naughty, that's naughty to look to the keyhole. Very naughty to look to the keyhole. Now well, stop looking through it when you're talking to me, then. Oh. <laughs> well, I'm only looking because I ain't never seen a fella kiss a girl. Haven't you, Akers? No. <laughs> no. Here, have, here, have you ever kissed a girl? <laughs> no, I'm not going to tell you. Oh, come on. Come on, I, I won't tell anybody. No, I'm not going to say. Come on. I'm a man of mystery. <laughs> oh, come on, you're, you're my friend. Come on. Are you, have you ever kissed a girl? What? Have you ever kissed a girl? <laughs> yes. Oh, it's good to be alive. <laughs> I'm a happy-go-lucky man. That's what I am. Thinks I'm a happy-go-lucky man. Oh, yeah. He thinks he's a happy-go-lucky man. He What's thinks... all this noise about? You, what do you want? I've got a message for you. If you want to join the ITA, report at once to number 10, Are You Certain Street? Are you certain? Positive. Right, let's go. <sighs> Here we are. <laughs> ITA headquarters, number 10. Winston, I've been expecting you. Vision Master Warman of the BBC. What are you doing? Don't be frightened. I am one of the ITA. I had a feeling you were. I knew it by the little things. The way you smiled at me across the room. The way you touched my hair when you passed my chair. The little things mean a heart. You silly, twisted boy. <laughs> Now then, you uh, want to join the ITA? Yes. Oh, well, what do you know about television? I had three years at the BBC Staff Training College. What did you learn? Nothing. Good. <laughs> we'll make you a director. Now, say after me, down with the BBC. Down with the BBC. Drink. We drank and smashed our glasses in the fireplace. I had to borrow a spare pair to find my way home. <laughs> Attention, everyone face the TV screen. Attention, 846 Winston Seagood. You are under arrest for conspiring with ITA. You will wait for detention by the studio attendants. You will then be prepared for agonizing death. Had they suspected me? <laughs> you will be taken to room 101. No, not 101. Not the listening room. <laughs> I'd just like to mention that the Radio Times is now on sale at all better class bookstalls, price triplets. And jolly good value for money it is, too. Oh, oh, let me go. Oh, why are they strapping me in this box? Why are these earphones? Hello, Winston Laddie. Ah, oh, Vision Master Waldman, so, so they got you, too. Yes, they got me a long time ago. I even remember the date. Monday night at eight. <laughs> now, Winston, we must torture you. You, you traitor. You deceived me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> of course, you can save yourself. How? Just sign this three-year BBC contract. What if I refuse? You have no option. A BBC contract with no option? Impossible! <laughs> oh. <laughs> What's become of my beloved? 
What have you done to Miss Snut? Snut will never walk the streets again. Why not? She's bought a scooter. <laughs> now, are you going to sign? Oh. Green Slade, turn the knob to 247 meters. Hill to see the new house. The lorries were away on their holiday. No! Except for the doctor. No! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! Stop it! I can't stand it! I can't! I can't stand it! Are you going to sign, Winston? No. No, I won't sign. Green Slade, 330 meters. hear that? Sign. No. Green Slade? No. I warn you, Winston, here we can change people into somebody else. You know Eccles. Yes? He used to be Issy Bond. <laughs> You're lying. Really? Green Slade, call Barbara Kelly. Miss Kelly! Yes, you calling me, Ronnie? Ah, <laughs> oh, Barbara, dear, what's your line? Colored television. Thank you. <laughs> Back on the old flying wire. You fiend. Poor Barbara Kelly. On the contrary, we think it's a great improvement. <laughs> it must be terrible at bedtime with Braden. <laughs> Well, it gets dark early in Canada. You know. <laughs> so the awful torture went on. In three days, I lost ten stone. My weight went down to a mere twenty stone. I looked so old and so ill, Wilfred Pickles demanded me for his TV program. <laughs> then the torture started again. <laughs> no! No! Stop! is it? Yours. Mariety, take over. I'm going to Jim Davidson's for a saxophone lesson. <laughs> Very good. Little torturer. Isn't it torture of blue bottle with junior cardboard <laughs> cutout torture kit? <laughs> Little luggy ridden yuckle. Prepare the screaming agony rack. Goody. Thinks. Perhaps 1985 is going to be a good year for Bloom Button. Starts to get agony set ready. No, Blue Button. Don't do it. Remember me? Your old pal, Nettie Seagull? <laughs> Your friend, remember me? <laughs> yes, my friend. Yes, yes. You're the one who digs me every week, isn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Thinks. I know the very thing for him. Prepares dirty big pile of the dreaded dynamite. <laughs> I like this game now, I do. This is a good game. I'd like it. Blue bottle. Blue bottle, please stop. There. All is ready for the dreaded deading of Traitor Seedun. Ladies and gentlemen, Ying Tong Hidden's Blonding. <laughs> I want you to witness that for the first time links in the history of the Kun shows, Blue Buttons will not be deaded. <laughs> Observe. I light a hundred foot fuse, so. Now, to escape. Taxi to the airport. Stop! Airplane, drive me to Australia. Stop! Horse, drive to the desert. Ladies and gentlemen, observe. I am now 10,000 miles away from the dreaded dynamite. Here, I am quite safe in the middle of the Woomera Desert. Oh! What is this? Play this rotten game. 
them again. <laughs> never, never. Thinks. All right, then, next week. <laughs> oh, look at my knees. They've gone. <laughs> <sighs> Meantime, back in the BBC torture room, I struggled to free myself before the dynamite exploded. Don't worry, Chikun. Blood knock. Eccles. Quick, untie him. Okay. I'd better hurry before that. <laughs> That's got his legs free. Yes, but where are they? Attention, attention, face the TV screen. Look, it's Morris Winnickstein. Listen, listen, great news. Listen, listen. <laughs> After a telephone conversation last in three days and bribes worth ten quid, I have gained control of the BBC. Right. Freedom at last. And here is the first of our ITA commercial programs. Raise the line. Raise the line. 